Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. Today is episode number 274 on my journey to 1800 ELO. And you might notice that I'm wearing the same shirt two days in a row. Actually, ha, gotcha. It's the same day. But uh, I decided to play a game off camera and uh, turns out I play really good off camera. So um, I want to do a recap. So today is going to be a little bit different video. We're going to do a recap instead. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Anyways, here we are. I want to go to kind of the full screen real quick so you guys can see. Your boy played a good game. Played with 90.7% accuracy. My opponent played a really good game as well. And played with 82.5% accuracy. As you can see, we had the black pieces. And yeah, did pretty well. Um, really just had one mistake, and we'll get right into that. So uh, let me jump back and heal. And boom shakalaki. Let's check it out. So we got our beloved Sicilian. And if you guys watched yesterday's video, if you haven't, go check it out. I... Don't want to spoil it. Stop right now. You can come right back. Um, anyways, yesterday's video, we played the Sicilian, and boy, was it aggravating for me. Um, I don't think that my opponent played in a bad way at all. I think he played really solidly, but it disgruntled me quite a bit. And it's because he kind of was playing like he was down to trade everything, and I just... I don't like that, man. I like to play, try to win the game. Like, and I think he kind of thought maybe he would beat me in like an end game and he was right he beat me so um anyways he got me dropped down to 1271 and if you guys can see chess.com is kind of stupid with this and they like put your elo after you've won the game there so you can see my elo is up because i won this game so this sicilian went our way my opponent played actually the same move i believe as my opponent yesterday and we played d6. So here, a little bit weird. He brings his other knight out, and we just go for an early fianchetto. The best way to play is to get this knight out. Um, and it's typically, I, I find when I play the dragon that it's not always like go for the fianchetto, which is kind of weird. I go for it like every time. So I guess I still got some things to learn. As far as that but I understand the knight coming here it it helps defend the center and it's not gonna get kicked away and if he wants to come over and give this check it's also not gonna be a check when my knights there already so it is a good move and I, I understand that maybe I should think about throwing that in as like the first move or so before I go for this fianchetto now he goes for straight up d4 and this is more typical I kind of expected him to do this he just played kind of a weird move order, right? Like, most people don't bring this knight out first. They bring this knight out first. And then they go for this. And when they, you know, we take, they take, and, uh, whoops, they take. And then they bring this knight out, like, kind of last. So he just kind of weird move ordered it. So we take. He brings the queen out. I brought this knight out. And the reason I did was, I mean, you know, of course, I want to bring this knight out, just, like, not thinking about anything. But I kind of did a weird move order and didn't bring my knight out first. And so my rook is hit right here. And I actually can't play bishop to g7 because he can just take the bishop. And then my rook is dead. So, yeah, we had to be careful about this. And we brought the knight out. So he goes for this move, going to pin my knight. I, I, I actually don't. It's not a pin. He brought his bishop out. His best move was not that. His best move, and that's, in the game, this is kind of what I thought he was going to play. I would have just taken this way. Um, actually, no, in this circumstance, I think that I could attack the queen. So, I think in this circumstance, um, yeah, so this ended up being kind of what this was, um, he went for a check. I attacked his queen. Um, he moved his queen, attacking this pawn. And weirdly enough, I was supposed to actually just disregard the fact that he's attacking this pawn, like not care about it. And I thought about that in the game. I did. Um, I wanted to just develop my knight and just not care. Um, but I didn't. I played this move. And the best move is, in fact, to just castle um, and let him take this. 
And I think the idea is that I can just play something like this. It defends my uh, rook, and it's also just attacking this pawn twice. So I think to me, that's what I think the the reason is behind that is like if the queen takes on this move, I could just play bishop to c6, defends the rook, and it attacks this. And we also have this attacking this, right? So I think that's why. Now we castled. White is a little bit better here for some reason, but I think that we've basically accomplished everything that we want out of the opening. Um, and so one of the things that I normally do when this bishop comes out, I almost immediately always bring my knight out. And I didn't do it here. I castled because I thought it was safer. And the computer agreed. So we do bring the knight out. He brings his knight in, and this is where I get a little funny. I uh, go to take this pawn. So this is, like, kind of scary. He's got, like... You know, he's basically trying to put pressure on this. Um, and if you guys look back here, you know, I brought the knight out here. All right, let's go back even farther. I castled here because he had so much pressure on this pawn, right? That's why the knight didn't come out here immediately. So we saw that. We were like, I mean, he's got a battery and we want to protect it. It's protected now. So he castles i'm like all right that's weird most people castle queenside when they're playing against the sicilian dragon so i already was like that's kind of weird develop the knight this is where i wanted my knight anyways and you know i was having ideas of just being annoying right i had this idea i had this idea um this idea you know this one i liked a lot and i kind of saw it a little later in the game but i was like this is kind of what i was thinking just to get one of these off the board the other thing is, is usually I like to win the dark squared bishop so that my dark squared bishop is a monster and it cannot be dealt with with another bishop. So we get the knight out. Anyways, sorry about that long jibber jab. So knight coming in seems like a decent move um, and, it, and it puts a lot of pressure now on this pawn. Now, this pawn is defended enough times, even if and technically the knight's in the way of the bishop. This knight was defending this pawn. This pawn has no defense now, and I decided to take the pawn, right? So he then plays a move like this, which I, I my immediate thought was take the pawn, take the bishop, right? So there's a few things happening when I take this pawn. My bishop is freaking open, wide open, boy. His knight is in the way of the battery. Um, he does have eyes on this. But, again, it's defended enough times by me, so he can't do anything with that, and we are just directly attacking the bishop. So when he brings the rook over here, he, he's not really understanding that I'm just going to take one of the guys off of this, and the same problem exists, is that I have enough defenders. My knight is here. If my knight wasn't here, this would be a big issue. But my knight is here. So we're good. <clears throat> take, take the bishop. He takes. Now, here, I was really trying to, excuse me, play a move like knight a5. That was right up my alley. I really wanted to do that. But he is putting a lot of pressure here with, you know, pieces. And this just kind of lets go of it. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is because this comes with check. So I would have to, like, immediately react if he did that, and I wouldn't be able to take it. So... With that in mind, I also understand that when he moves that knight, this becomes kind of an issue too. It's not really, it's defended right now, but he's now got this piece here. So this is becoming a bigger problem, right? Like I, I could take once, but I wouldn't be able to take twice and I'd have to move my king. Kind of rough. So we don't want that. So I played e6. Best move, gotta be, makes sense, right? We're kicking this out. This battery is now a little dull and... I figured he was going to try and sack, and that's what he does. He goes for a sack. I thought for a long while here, but I and I thought about taking with the bishop, but I was like, no way. Can't be the right move. Got to do this. Kicks the knight. And I thought he was going to play a move like this, which just hangs the knight in one move, right? So that wouldn't work. Um, the reason I thought... That might happen was because he. I I thought the sack was a shitty sack. I I calculated that it didn't work. If you notice, he's got plenty of time on the clock, and he didn't calculate that it didn't work. He just did it. Um, he brings the knight back here, 
So I thought he was going to bring the knight here so that when I take, he's just going to take, takes, and then takes, defended by the rook, and his check. And maybe he just feels like he accomplished something there. I don't know. I thought that was what he was going to do. Instead, he drops the knight back. And this is the better move. By far the better move. I didn't know what he was going to play. I was like, man, that was a bad sack. Shouldn't have done that, dog. Should not have done that. But he did. So, and I, I knew that no matter where he moves the knight, almost no matter what, I was going to play this move. Um, it's not the best move, but it was, like, my favorite move. So, the computer likes this. The reason I did, I was going to play this move, but I didn't do it because he just takes. 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 It's with check. And he, like, escapes all the danger. So, I decided to kick the bishop and bring the queen over. This is a cool move that I found, and I found it pretty quickly. It's double attacking two things. It's attacking this, which is a check on the king, but it's also threatening to win this pawn and queen trade, and I think we're all good. I really don't think he can avoid the queen trade here. I think he'd have to do it. So, he actually defends the check that we were offering, but he doesn't defend this, and I, I mean, he's kind of got a queen trade here. I don't really see another option for him. I mean, he could maybe just like do something like this, to trade more on his own terms, but uh, he takes, I take, he moves the rook, we drop this bishop back just one square, just being really annoying, he's got to move that rook now, he decides to move it forward, and I was like, bro, I don't know about that, I brought the knight in, not the best move, but it is a good move, so I brought the knight in, I, I learned from my coach, and I've, I've learned a long time ago that being annoying in chess is a good way to play, um, especially if it means that it's making you a little more offensive. As long as you're defending your pieces and everything is good and you can retreat somewhere. Like, I, I think one or two moves ahead, and as long as I think that I can, like, get out of there if I need to or something, I, I play moves like this. So, this move was kind of a one-move threat, but it, it, the idea was, you know, it attacks the rook. He's going to have to move again. He can't go back, can't go here. He's going to have to go here. And I was like, that's cool. Like, I've, I've moved him around a lot, and then something like this might force a trade. So, um, I liked that. Um, he does go there. We drop the knight back. I'm like, all right, man, let's trade, bro. And my whole thought was, like, you know, if he does take, we'll take. And I'm happy. I could take with the rook. I'm fine with that. Now, what he does is he moves the knight. He doesn't trade. And I was like, bro, I don't think that was the move, because now we have rook to, uh, or excuse me, rook bishop to d4 and this pins the rook to the king now the computer doesn't like this move and i understand why this bishop i i i am supposed to keep this bishop forever because this bishop ends up being just the pride and joy of the dragon the sicilian dragon like this is the guy like this is the guy and it's worth more than this rook especially now that this rook kind of is like what the hell is it doing right but I was like, dude, it's material, and if we know how to do math, we know how to do math. That thing's worth more than this. So, not the best move, like I said, but it was what we played. And here, I was like, alright, I'm a material, let's go, boy. This was a freaking cool little tactic that I saw. It's not the best move, but I was like, he can't take, because I'll just take the rook, right? You know, um, again, not the best move, by any means. It actually wants me to bring my king up so that shenanigans don't happen in here it, they can't right now because all of these squares are defended by pieces but it was just an I idea um because he he could take this right and then i don't think there's anything but he can be annoying a little more annoying but anyways we did this we moved the knight brought this over I didn't want him to take my bishop, but I liked this because we're offering a bishop trade. Now, this is really tactical, right? Like, his best move is to take this knight. And in that position, I think I would need to take his rook. Because if he takes my knight and I take his bishop, he takes here, I take, and then he takes the bishop. And we have a rook for a knight, which is not as good as being up the material we are now. Whereas, if he takes here and I just take the rook, he wins this, but I'm up a rook for, I'm up, I'm basically, I got a rook for two pieces, and I have another rook. So, it'd be like two rooks versus these two pieces. I think that's better. So, 
he played a weird move. He just took my pawn, sacked another piece. Um, I don't know what he what his idea was. I think that his idea was, um, if I do something just like this to attack the knight, that he had this fork. I guess that was his idea. So I did not allow that, right? I just played rook two f7, and my idea was probably to double the rooks. Yeah, especially when he does this, he kind of prompt moved my hand, you know, forced my hand. Um, I didn't have to do that. I could have moved somewhere different, but I liked it. Um, I think a move like, like, I, I think this was fine. And he resigned here, and I mean, I get it. I mean, you should probably take the, I don't know. I don't really know what to do. They're completely lost here, so I understand why he resigned. Um, but it was a good game by us. We played really well. We played, like, let's look at this. We played, like, in 1850. My opponent played, like, a 1500. And, yeah, we didn't get to the end game, but we played a fantastic middle game. And, like I said, playing with 90.7% accuracy, you love it. Love it. So we got up to 1280 in this game, and, yeah, felt good, especially coming off of the loss that we played right before this um, yesterday for you guys. I felt like we had a pretty good game. And it feels good to play a Sicilian and and come out advantageous or at least even just have an attack. Even if it fails, it's cool to be able to have like a little bit of a you know power struggle like going on whereas yesterday's game was kind of like a let's just trade every I didn't do it, but my opponent initiated a bunch of trades and I just I don't like playing that way. But Whatever. Those are good games to learn from. I actually went back through and looked at yesterday's game, and uh, there are some little things that I could have done, I think, to like give myself more chances and not really play his game, but I kind of just fell in line and did what he wanted to do. Whereas in this game, it's like, dude, this is my world, and you're just living in it. Like, you know, I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with me. That's how I felt. Say with your chest. Say with your chest. So We played a good game today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um... Let's get to the intro. Look at my big old face. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. I enjoy reading you guys' comments, so comment. Let me know what you guys thought of this game. Let me know what you guys think of my videos thus far, what I can do to help improve my chess, improve my video content, and uh, most of all, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I will catch you guys tomorrow. See you then.